Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you to my esteemed colleagues. The resolution today, I believe, has nothing to do with gun violence. So I'm going to speak specifically about the resolution. Roe versus Wade Anniversary Day. <clears throat> because we want to speak to the bills and the resolutions. <clears throat> I know that better than anybody. Now, we talk about health care versus life. And everyone wants to gush and tell stories, so I'm going to tell one about life. You see, when my mother was pregnant with me, she had cervical cancer. And all the medical practitioners back in 1964 said, ma'am, you have to have an abortion. There is no way you can bring that child to term because of your cancer condition. These are American doctors, because at that time, my father, my Spanish father naturalized as American, and my mother and my two brothers had left Spain and moved back to California, where most of my mother's family lived. So, a woman had to make a choice between life and health care. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as I stand before you today, do you know what choice she made? Now, let me tell you the journey that had to be taken for me to be born. Because we had to go back to Spain. Because in this country, the medical practitioners said, we will not allow your baby, will not support this condition. You must abort your baby. And my mother made a choice and she said, no. She chose life for her child over an abortion. And yes, Representative Herod is correct. Mothers give birth. Women have babies. They have that special gift, that beautiful biological gift that God has given them. Now, so we packed up and went back to my city of birth, where my Spanish family still lives today. And do you know what happened when we got there? The medical practitioner said we can absolutely support your baby being born and going full term. And after that, we'll perform the hysterectomy that American doctors have said is absolutely necessary, and we will begin cancer treatment. You have a statistical probability of life but the cancer may take you. So every time we talk about this, I think about my mom's story, if we're gonna tell stories about our mother. I am so thankful that my mother chose life over abortion. This is a very difficult conversation, but I am a pro-life legislator and I believe in life. I also believe in women's rights. I have five daughters, so it's extremely complex. So let's talk about the next part of this little story. When I was in college, I had a girlfriend and she was a beautiful young woman. And we had the unfortunate experience of her getting pregnant. Now, I'm Catholic, so you know my position on life. But I had to respect her rights because she said she didn't want to keep her baby. Now that's hard. That's hard for a man who respects women. 
but I respected her rights and actually gave her money to help her through her important critical time so she could live her best life, which she decided was not with me in a future with me. But this story does have a happy ending because you see later in life when I was a young army officer and another beautiful woman who attended University of Kansas, high school friends, later became boyfriend and girlfriend and started a very serious relationship because in your 20s, those things happen. We also had this misfortune because it was unplanned. But we made a choice. We chose life. You see, we were both Catholic and we knew that we had made a mistake in the eyes of God and we had to live up to it. So what did we do? And this is about choices and choice for life. We decided, she decided that she was not gonna keep the baby for herself. She decided that we were not gonna get married because I asked her, let's just get married. Let's just get married and make a family. But I had to respect her choice as a woman because she said no. Does anybody see the reoccurring theme here? So, we went to Wichita. We looked into Catholic charities and we arranged an open adoption. Adoption is a choice that oftentimes gets suppressed and it's a way to give a family who can't have children a child. And it's a beautiful choice for life. I've lived it. We want to talk about lived experience. I have so much lived experience, you have no idea. But we won't talk about it all this morning, so you can thank me later. But let me tell you something. The Catholic charities were wonderful. My girlfriend and I took our beautiful daughter to term. One of the hardest things I ever did was give that girl away. But here's the beautiful thing. In that open adoption arrangement, my daughter Naomi, I got to see her every year. She got to know who her father was. She got to know me and know why. She acts the way she does, because she's a lot like her daddy. Her hair color is the color it is, and where she comes from. And that she's a quarter Spanish, so she, she's Hispanic. And she needs to know that. And like her father now, she speaks Spanish because of me and teaches Spanish and embraces our Hispanic and our Latin culture 100%. Now, I have the privilege this next Monday of my daughter that I speak of and my grandson, Manny, coming to see me in Colorado. Think about that. what that means when you choose life. I'm here, she's here, and my grandson is here. Now, I will tell you, these are very difficult times. Representative okay. Holtorf, you have one minute remaining. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I fully expected to get that one minute warning. <clears throat> I will tell you that in every case, we need to think about life. I cannot support this resolution because I am a product of that choice. So is my beautiful daughter, who's 31 years old now and has teaches school, and my grandson, Manny, who would never be on this earth, who's a beautiful young three-year-old boy that is my only biological grandson. Thank you for your time. I will not take the remaining 23 seconds. And Representative, two 